Hi, it's Dante and welcome back to my channel. Guys, I am super excited to be making this video as I always say, but I'm actually really friggin' pissed off right now because I filmed this entire video yesterday, or two days ago, yesterday, it was yesterday, in the morning and at night when I tried to transfer over the footage to my computer to start editing, for some reason the file got corrupted so my entire um, like video footage was completely deleted. So. And I was actually really proud of this video. I was like, this one's going to be really good. Like, it was also my longest video. So, you know, I did a lot of footage for this. And I'm a little pissed off right now. But it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to deliver it all right now again. And, yeah. So, that's super exciting. So, I also want to mention, guys, I have my Instagram and Twitter linked down below now. I would like you guys to follow me there if you want to. But, like, no pressure at all. I really like the Twitter family. <sighs> There's fucking dust everywhere. <sighs> I really like, um... You know, when people have, like, Twitter families that, like, they can kind of talk to there. And I would really like to start doing, like, Twitter polls on, like, what um, cases you guys would like to see. Because I have, like, ten cases planned out for the next, like, ten weeks that I want to cover. Um, but it would be really cool if I could, like, hear which ones you guys are more interested in. So I could, like, lay those out, like, earlier on so you guys would have more better content that you'd be uh, more interested in, which would be super cool. And also, guys, if you want to see me on Instagram, like, that's pretty cool, too. Just saying. Like, that would be pretty sick. Same. So I just thought I should plug those really quickly because I feel like people don't know they're there. Um, so yeah, those are there. Um, what else did I want to add? I think that's it. I think that's all I had to say. Yeah, really short introduction. That's what I think I'm going to be known for is really short intros because I just like to get my announcements out. So yeah, guys, let's get into today's case, which is the case of Tyler Clementi. So when I was researching this case, I actually heard about this case a few years ago, obviously, when it originally happened in, I think, 2011. And I was really heartbroken when I had first learned all the details because I had heard, like, it was a suicide and it was brought upon by kind of, like, cyberbullying at his school and cyber harassment, which, I mean, you guys know I cover a lot of cyberbullying cases on this channel. I think it's really important that we still talk about these issues because they are still very pertinent in society today and I want to keep covering them as I feel like it's a good way to spread awareness. So this case has a lot of that in there and that really bothers me so that's one of the reasons why I want to cover this case but the more that I researched this case the more angry I got with just the way that everyone involved handled it and it just really upset me to my core. So if I get a little upset during this video, I'm not crying or anything, just like visibly angry, like it's just because this case really upset me and it really like I hate the word, but it triggered me. It really triggered me when I was researching this. I was like, damn. So yeah, guys, let's get into today's case. So in all of my videos, I like to start off by talking about who the victim was prior to everything happening. So let's get into this. So Tyler Clementi was born on December 19th of 1991 in Ridgewood, New Jersey. In his youth, he liked to play the violin a lot and he performed with the Ridgeway Symphony Youth Orchestra. He was also a concert master when he was a little older for the Bergen Orchestra Youth. So as you can tell, music was a really big part of his life and he really enjoyed doing music. And a lot of people said that he was super inspirational to the kids that he would mentor and a lot of people like aspired to be him when they were older because they just really admired his musical talent and they wanted to have, you know, as much talent as he did. So for high school, he went to Ridgewood High School, which was, I'm just sure, like the normal high school in his area. And I couldn't really find a lot of information about that, just that it was like a pretty average high school experience. I don't think he was bullied too much for anything, I just think he like had a pretty normal life. And before he graduated school, he was actually accepted into Rutgers University. He was going to perform in the orchestra, that was like a big part of what he was going to do when he was at Rutgers. So right before leaving for college though, Tyler decided that it was finally time for him to come out to his family. So he wanted to tell his parents a few days before he left that he was gay. And so when he did, his father was super accepting of him. However, his mother had some reservations. It's not that she didn't love him or like kick him out or anything. It's just that she was kind of taken aback because this was super surprising to her. I mean, you know, this is a really big piece of information and it is life changing, you know what I mean, for him. And so she wanted, she was just very taken aback by this. In later interviews, she talked about how religion played a huge influence in the way that she saw her son now as she had been taught that being gay is a sin something that would get you sent to hell and so for her she was you know very shocked by this news and kind of sad but she still loved her son and after this they were all able to hug and they all said they love each other so there was still a lot of love in this family which is super good to know so the mother specifically i just want to say cited that the evangelical church which was what she was a member of was the reason that she was unable to accept her son at first um and she actually in later interviews said that she really regrets this and wished that she didn't listen to her religion as much and she wished that she was just able to love her son in that moment so now we're going to kind of get into the start of what actually happened at rutgers university which is where this case kind of takes off so a few weeks before leaving for college tyler had received his roommate assignment and he was going to be rooming with a man named Dehran Ravi. I'm not really sure how to say his first name, so I'm gonna say Ravi, and that's, we're just gonna call him Ravi, because it's easier for me. 
So right when Ravi had gotten who his roommate was, Tyler, he wanted to learn more about him and so he went on the internet and started to Google search for him trying to figure out um, who he was and if there was any information he could find on him because he was just curious. And when he was on there, he had actually discovered that Tyler had been posting in some gay chat rooms and so when he found this out, he assumed, well obviously he is gay, and he tweeted out, found out my roommate is gay on Twitter. So Tyler had also done the same thing and started searching for information on Ravi and when he started searching he found this Twitter account and he found where he had said, oh just found out my roommate is gay and was kind of making a big deal about this. So obviously Tyler was super uncomfortable because it seemed like Ravi was making a big deal of his sexual orientation and obviously I think anyone in his position would have been super uncomfortable. So when they finally got to the dormitory things did not get a lot better. Um, both of them said that things were really awkward between them as they didn't really interact a lot. They didn't say anything to each other, which I feel like is always going to be awkward if you're living with somebody. Something else to note, I think that Tyler had talked about to one of his friends at Rutgers, was that a couple days after they had got there, Ravi had constructed like a private changing area inside of the dorm room so that way he could change in there and I guess feel comfortable that he knew Tyler wasn't watching him, which obviously is going to make Tyler feel super uncomfortable. So a little side note here guys. This part, when I was reading about it, actually pissed me off so much because Tyler had to live with the friggin' stereotype that every gay guy wants to have sex with every straight guy they can get their hands on and they're always predatory and always preying on the heteros. And it just bothered me so much because you can see that Tyler had literally no interest. Like, he went out of his way to avoid talking to Ravi and Ravi still assumed, well, I'm uncomfortable because he's gay so I'm gonna construct this private changing area in our dorm room like, obviously, that's going to make Tyler feel super uncomfortable. I know that personally, if I was, you know, with my roommate and they had constructed something, I would be like, am I that nasty? Like, you can't just assume that I'm going to respect your wishes and not look at you. This part specifically really pissed me off, especially because it's just feeding into the stereotype that all gays, like, want heterosexuals. Like, it's just, like, so freaking frustrating. And it... It just bothered me so much. That's just like the side note. I just wanted to rant a little bit, but yeah, so back to the case. Like literally the one place on campus you're supposed to feel safe, your dorm, and now you feel like you're not even wanted there. It must have been truly hard for him to like live like that. But Tyler did say that everything was okay because he was just happy that Ravi wasn't like pushing him for information or saying anything. He was honestly, he said that he preferred it, that they were kind of keeping their distance between each other and that he was, you know, fine with that. However, on September 19th, everything changed for Tyler and Ravi's relationship. Tyler asked Ravi if he could have the room for the night, and Ravi said, yeah, okay. Tyler said, I would like to have it from, like, I think 6 p.m. till 12 p.m. because he was going to have a guy friend over. And when the guy friend came, he actually, uh, Tyler had introduced him to Ravi because he wanted him to feel comfortable, like, this was going to be a person in their room, so he was like, oh, I just want you to know, like, everything's cool with this guy, like, he's really nice. And Ravi met him, and everything seemed okay. So... At the time, Tyler did not know this, but Ravi had set up his camera to face Tyler's bed so that he could see what they were doing. Now, in later interviews, Ravi claimed that he did this so that way he would know if they were going to steal anything to make sure they didn't touch his stuff. He had also gone around and told other friends that he had done this to prove that Tyler was gay and that he was going to hook up with this guy that was in his room. So. I mean, whoever you believe, I'm not really sure, but he told one story to the police and he told another story to all of his friends. After Tyler had gone into his room with his friend, Ravi had gone over to his friend Molly Way's room and in that room he had hooked up the camera so that it would live stream to her computer directly via this website called iChat. And so when they turned on the camera, they saw that Tyler and his friend were making out. So they had watched this for a little bit and I guess just turned it off and Ravi had decided to leave. But a couple hours later, Molly had then turned on the camera again when she had a group of, I think, four of her friends over, and they had continued to watch the, the live stream, except this time, both of the men had their shirts off, so clearly things were progressing. And I think they did turn off the camera at this point. Maybe they realized it was too big of an invasion of privacy, and, you know, they finally had a change of heart and decided to turn it off. On the 20th, which was the day after the live stream had first happened, Ravi tweeted out, Roommate asked for the room till midnight. I went into Molly's room and turned on my webcam. I saw him making out with a dude. Yay. So now, I don't know if Ravi knew this, but Tyler had actually followed his Twitter uh, before school started when he had found the account. And so when he had seen this, he was like, probably fucking mortified because he realized that two people, if not more people, were watching him in his dorm where he thought he was completely alone and had privacy make out with another dude. 
Like, I can't even imagine the horror that I would feel if I found that out the next day, and also the, the sense of just, like, a complete invasion of privacy for myself. I literally would have been horrified, and this is the part where I got super upset, because I was like, that is just such a complete invasion of privacy, like, I'm literally shaking. I'm just, it's so upsetting to me to see that this happened. So when Tyler had found out that his roommate had done this, he sent a room request change to, like, the dormitory people who, like, whoever handles the housing, the housing department, I think that's what it's called, and he said, a roommate used a webcam to spy on me, and that this is the reason that he was citing for why he needed a room change. So the next day, so that was September 20th, he sent out his room request, and on September 21st, Robbie sent out a mass text to all of his friends telling them that there would be a viewing party where they could all watch Tyler make out with his friend because he was coming back over. He even sent out instructions on how to access the live stream when he sent this text message out to all of his friends. So before Robbie left the bedroom because uh, he was going to give it over and hand it over to Tyler to do whatever he wanted with his friend, he had made sure that his camera was facing the bed so that they would make sure they would get a better show this time so they could really see what was going on this time. When Tyler came back to the room, I mean, he knew that Robbie had filmed him the last time, so I think he knew that if his friend came over again, this could, you know, happen. He looked at Robbie's desk and he saw that the camera was again facing him, and I think he saw that it was turned on, and he was just so pissed off, and he unplugged the camera so that way it would be off and there was no way that there would be a live stream this time. Now. A couple weeks after this incident, Robbie had claimed that he actually had a change of heart and decided to turn it off. However, I strongly doubt that was the case, as he was literally tweeting out only hours before this happened, like, everybody get ready to watch the live stream, like, it's gonna be good, like, here's instructions on how to access it. So it seems very unlikely that he was the one that did this, and it seems way more likely that Tyler unplugged it. So after Tyler had kind of, you know, been with his friend a second time, he decided that he had to go to his resident officials and request a room change through them because I guess he didn't get an, an email back yet from the uh, housing department, so he wanted to, he needed this change. I mean, it was a complete invasion of privacy what Robbie did, and so he was like, I, I need to get out of here. So we went to them, and he asked the resident officials if they would be able to switch his room, like, ASAP, and he also asked that they would punish Robbie in some sort of way because this was completely wrong, and actually, it is illegal. Invasion of privacy is a crime punishable by law and by prison, so it's a very real thing, and, and Tyler was totally in his right to do what he was doing, and he actually handled the situation so maturely by going and trying to get a room change as quickly as he could after he found out that this incident happened. The resident officials said that Tyler seemed visibly shaken up and uncomfortable when he went to confront them, and that it seemed like this was really on his mind and messing with him that somebody was watching him do this. So after he had gone and talked to them, he sent another follow-up email that night because he really did want this room change, saying, I feel like my privacy has been violated and I am extremely uncomfortable sharing a room with someone who would act in this wildly inappropriate manner. I wrote in my notes, because this is when I literally lost my shit, I said he handled this so maturely and it breaks my heart he didn't receive justice because they never ended up doing this room change and you'll see why in just a few minutes. I just want to say and, and stress here that Tyler handled the situation so maturely and so adult-like that it literally astounds, like, I would not have been able to keep this much composure. If I found out that somebody was filming me, I would have lost my mind on this individual and I would never be in a room again with them, but the fact that he was able to go to his higher-ups and handle this situation as you should, like an adult, is truly remarkable to me and I really want to give him respect and props for that. He handled this situation also just really shows his character and really shows that he is a very mature boy, especially for his age of 18. I know a lot of people would physically want to lash out or attack this person, but the way that he handled it I think really shows that he was way more mature than I think a lot of people were at his age and that he had a lot of respect for people in in my opinion, people who didn't even deserve his respect in the first place. After he sent out all these emails and gone and talked to the resident officials, he also posted in his message board the one that uh, Robbie had actually found him on earlier, and he said that he was super uncomfortable with his roommate and his actions, and that he had requested for a room change. He also said that the resident officials were seriously looking into his concerns, so he felt like the school was actually going to give him what he wanted. However, everything took a horrible and dark turn on the night of September 22nd, when Tyler had left his dorm for the very last time. He had gone and gotten some food at the dining hall at around 6.30, and after that, he had started walking towards the George Washington Bridge. And at 8.42 p.m., he had messaged out on Facebook, jumping off the George W. Bridge. Sorry. And he did just that. He had left a note, which has never been released to the public, so I don't know what it says. No one knows what it says. It has literally never been seen, I think, by anyone but the parents, and maybe the police, but it was not ever shown in court either, so 
I mean, it, it, this has been very kept hush-hush, so I don't know what's in there, but it seems very serious they don't want to tell anybody. So a week later, on September 29th, they did eventually find his body. They drudged it out of the water, and they had uh, done an autopsy, and they found that the cause of death was drowning. So the response to Tyler Clemente's death was huge, and it was heard all over the nation. At Rutgers, students created an event called Black Friday, where they, they memorialized and they commemorated Tyler on his life. The following school year, Rutgers had also started to put a lot of policies forward to help and support their LGBT students. So one of their policies was that they introduced a pilot program which allowed for gender neutral housing to hopefully make the university feel a lot safer for transgender people and gay people. I know that for me, if I was you know, able to house with my best friends, that would have been such a cool thing to do. I would love to do that. I would have totally felt so much better if I was able to dorm with them, you know what I mean? Like that would be so cool. So I'm really glad that I think Rutgers did make a good step in the right direction with this move. Many nearby schools, like Hofstra, um, had also had vigils for Tyler, as I think a lot of students resonated with this, and they felt like this was just the straw that broke the camel's back, really, though, because they felt like this just showed how real bullying can be and cyber harassment can be. Tyler's parents also created a foundation called the Tyler Clementi Foundation, which focuses on trying to support LGBT youth and to provide a lot of um, educational videos on the negative effects of cyberbullying and what cyber harassment and bullying in general can do to someone, especially groups of minorities. Tyler's death overall brought a lot of attention to LGBT youth and especially the suicide rates in LGBT youth, which is extremely higher than the suicide rates of so after doing a quick Google search, I wanted to add in some important statistics to paint the picture of like to be LGBT in the time period of 2010-2016 when these statistics are from, and also when the Tyler Clemente case was very prominent. So these are some important statistics that have been provided from the Trevor Project, which is a, an organization which aims to help LGBT youth and people who are struggling with their gender or sexual identities. So I'm just going to read some quotes from there because I feel like it's the best way to convey the message. LGB youth seriously contemplate suicide at almost three times the rate of heterosexual youth. Of all the suicide attempts made by youth, LGB youth suicide attempts were almost five times as likely to require medical treatment than those of heterosexual youth. So that was just like lesbian, gay, bi people. So now let's look at trans a little bit. In a national study, 40% of transgender adults reported having made a suicide attempt, and 92% of these individuals reported having attempted suicide before the age of 25. These statistics are from 2010 to 2016, so kind of the era that Tyler Clementi was from. And so I want you guys to realize, like, this is the climate that they were in back then. Like, it was very serious. Like, a lot of LGBT youth were hurting themselves or wanting to hurt themselves a much much higher rates than heterosexual people were and that's why this was such an important case and that's why so much attention was brought on this case because it really showed the climate the nation was in with regards to LGBT rights. This attention that Tyler Clemente had brought and shined on this issue was actually um, fuel for Congress and, and President Barack Obama to actually start creating laws and legislation to make punishments more real and uh, significant on people who bully or cyber bully people on minority groups. So now I'm going to talk about the court proceedings because there actually was legal ramifications for what happened for Ravi and Molly Way. So on September 28th of 2010, Molly and Ravi were charged both with two counts of invasion of privacy. Ravi also got two additional counts of invasion of privacy for the second time he tried to live stream Tyler with his friend. On May 6th of 2011, Molly had received a plea deal in exchange for testifying against Ravi. Her punishment was reduced to only 300 hours of community service, counseling, and classes on dealing with people with alternative lifestyles. On March 16th of 2012, Ravi was convicted with 15 counts of invasion of privacy, bias intimidation, tampering with evidence, witness tampering, and hindering apprehension or prosecution. Ravi was then sentenced to 30 days in jail, so real jail, three years of probation, 300 hours of community service, and a $10,000 fine in counseling lessons on why cyberbullying is negative and its negative impacts and how to deal with people who live alternative lifestyles. Ravi ended up only serving 20 of those 30 days because he got off for good behavior, which I didn't even know could happen in like people who got sentences that were less than like two years. I didn't know that you could get it for like 30 day sentences, but I guess he could. I also think his age played a fact in that because he was like, what, 20 or 21? So I think that that definitely played something in it. However, in February of 2016, Ravi asked that the courts overturn a part of his conviction as there is actually a Supreme Court 
hearing that went against one of the laws that he technically broke and it was in favor of him so they actually did end up reducing his sentence to only attempted invasion of privacy a third degree um, felony. So to this day, Ravi claims that what he did was not homophobic and his intentions were not motivated by Tyler Clemente's sexual orientation. Now personally, after researching this case, I look back at the tweets and I think his tweets tell a very different story. If you weren't homophobic and you didn't care about his sexual orientation, then why was the first thing that you tweeted out when you learned of your roommate's sexual orientation, oh he's gay? Why would that matter? Why would you then pick on him? and live stream a video of him making out with another guy. You would never do that to one of your friends if it was just a girl. But because it was with a guy, you thought it was entertaining, shocking, and funny. I don't know why I keep doing air quotes, but you know what I mean. Like, I think it's pretty apparent what his motivations were, whether he denies them now or not. I think this was definitely fueled, at least to some degree, by an intolerance of gay people. Maybe not a ho complete homophobia, but it was definitely an intolerance at the very least. This case overall really made me upset, especially reading what the um, convictions were and how much time they actually ended up serving. I'm not saying he deserved years and years and years in jail, but I will say that a man lost his life who was described as being a really kind, creative person, and that person lost their life at 18 years old, and I don't know if it was completely because of the actions of Ravi, but I think that that was definitely the straw that broke the camel's back, was him being filmed and laughed at by his peers. And I feel like was justice served here? I don't really know. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say down below, and I'll be responding. I always respond to people's comments, and I would love to know what you guys think. But guys, that is the case of Tyler Clementi. Thank you so much for listening to today's story. I hope it was okay. I hope I did okay by refilming it, because I always feel like if I refilm something, then I like miss parts because I'm like, oh, I already covered that, but then I'm like, oh, no, I didn't because that was in the last filming. And yeah, but I hope I did a pretty good job in this video. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. By the way, I made like a final screen, so let me know what you guys think of my final screen. I really like it. It's cute. It's whatever. It's got my like whole stars and space theme. That's like my theme for my channel. It's like stars and space and like blues and turquoises. Yeah, because it's like my channel. Now. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. I love you guys so much, and see you in the next one. Bye.